way up high, uh, overlooking the beautiful Chino Hills, you said? No, that's Saddleback. Saddleback. Well, your blend is over here, and then go, you got uh, Chino Hills State Park where everybody goes mountain biking. Mount Baldy's off in the distance over there, but yeah, this is the famous, from everywhere in Orange County, you look up, you can see Saddleback. That's an old place. It's Everybody just, used to go dirt bike riding. With and, the moon and with the sunset, you know, we we're we we're really burning the midnight oil, starting like early, finishing late, but looking at possibly one of the coolest electric bikes I've ever seen. Um, this is the high bike Exturo, meaning it has a Bosch motor, Urban SRX. This is, it's almost like a road bike, like the geometry, the narrow tires, but it doesn't have drop bars. It has an F actually fairly wide, almost like a mountain bike bar. And if you look at the rise here, it says display protection bend. So they've been doing this on a lot of their bikes. The idea is that it keeps the Bosch and Tuvia display panel protected if you fall, but it still gives you an aggressive angle because they use these stems that are either negative degree or flat like this one. Uh, this one is from XLC. It says RR Anti-Shock. I've never seen this before, but going over bumps, I was hearing a little bit of rattling. Keys. It's also the keys. And then I was thinking maybe some movement. I mean, did it feel more comfortable to you, Sam? I just rode it on the parking lot. I didn't get a long enough ride on it to get a full impression on it, but I will. Well, yeah, we're, I mean, I'm stoked on this thing. Again, because it's a speed pedal, like it's so light, it's 41 pounds. And that's with what I consider to be one of the best drive systems around. This is the Bosch Performance Speed Motor, along with their standard Power Pack 400, 36 volt, 11 amp hours. Um, all that weight, low and center on the frame. But coming back to comfort, you know, when you have these narrower tires like this, you wanna make sure that the PSI is really high because you can get pinch flats easily. And I think they recommend, um, what were it, 65 to 100 PSI? I bumped them up to 90. 90 okay you know i'm not too heavy myself i'm like 135 pounds and then they say it's 700 by 32 c so that's that's kind of the measurements dt swiss rims sort of that deep dish maybe double walled they've got bladed spokes which are really nice i w there's so much information that i put back at the written review but little things like i didn't get tons of information about the spokes the hubs are both dt swiss it almost makes me wonder the material on the rims this is an 11 sprocket cassette back here SRAM, Rival, and then up front we've got 20 teeth on this narrow wide sprocket. And that means that the teeth alternate from narrow to wide and they fit more perfectly in between these chain links. You get less slipping. This is a super responsive system. I've reviewed it a bunch of times, but what it does is measures wheel speed with a standard magnet kind of sensor down here pedal cadence and pedal torque and it measures that like a thousand times per second have you heard anything about that sam it's just uh, technology and and all the manufacturers are upping their game it's yeah. just getting better and better all the time it's really responsive so when you start to pedal it it instantly like clicks right on and the you know these are 175 millimeter crank arms so they're a little bit longer and what i found is that that sprocket spins about 2x for every revolution so it feels like a traditional front chain ring that's larger um, but you get you're kind of optimizing the motor so it's spinning faster and that's that's going to generate more torque motors like electric motors like to spin at a higher rpm but it also has to be responsive too and that enables it to do so uh, i like that there's a bit of a chain guide kind of thing it helps your pants not to get messed up on the chain i also like that they have a slap guard because given the range of these sprockets back here and then that smaller ring they don't have a tensioner or a riser so the chain can get pretty close they're, they're protecting the look love the matte white finish with matte black accents and these integrated lights look at this thing really tall and and kind of like right above the wheel and it shines from all angles that's important because if you're sitting on the seat with a jacket on your jacket can kind of hang down a little bit sometimes and block lights in this case it doesn't one thing that's missing back here possibly is bosses for adding like a rear rack if you wanted to use this for commuting you know it's high speed this thing could really yeah you're right you could do a beam rack there are workarounds coming back to this is 31.6 millimeter seat post and it's also anti-shock xlc anti-shock i i don't know exactly how it works but it felt all right. I mean, this, this is a more rigid ride for sure, but it's fast. It's super efficient, it's fast. And it's light. And it's light, yeah. 41 pounds. 41 pounds. And again, Physic Arione, and I hope I'm saying that right, locking, flat grips, and then Maguro MT4s, front and rear, with 180 millimeter discs, hydraulic. They've got that little warning tag on the spokes on both sides because they're bladed and they don't want you to cut your finger off. Same thing with, with uh, the rotor. If you put your finger in there and someone moves the bike, it can actually really hurt you. So be careful. Uh, this bike is, is awesome, but just like any technology, you know, there's, it's sort of uh, 
you know, do your best to be safe. And Sam, I love the, the light up helmet that you've got kind of paralleling the lights. And that, which, where's that from? What company? Oh man, you got me. That you got uh, right it's not the burn. Oh, it's, it's a the, torch. Torch, there you go. Okay. okay. I want to call out too that you mentioned the battery size and as of next year, you'll be able to upgrade to a 500 watt hour battery. And is that compatible good. with both? Absolutely compatible. And some people might want to get it and upgrade right away. So okay. that's something you could consider if you want that extra range. And with the low resistant tires and the speed that this thing does, I mean, you're hitting 28 miles an hour on this. Pretty with easily. With that larger battery, now we're talking about some pretty good commute distance. You make a really interesting point because as you go, especially above 20 miles per hour, the wind resistance, even if you're angled and you're tight and stuff, you, you really just see a drop off in efficiency. And the bike is helping to propel you. We, we like sprinted up this parking garage. Five levels. At five levels, no problem, like high speed the whole way. And anyway, the air resistance and just the, the motor's capable, but they say, oh, it's up to like 65 plus miles. And I think it's sometimes they even say like closer to 90 or something, but that varies depending on tire pressure, terrain. Yeah. Uh, range is always contingent on so many different factors. So the, the manufacturers like to embellish the numbers and you have to kind of like read around on the internet to find out what people are saying their actual range is. Right. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. The headlight is also part of that integrated package. It all runs off the main battery pack. It's super bright and has this really cool pattern on the ground that's kind of like a diamond shape. You can also angle it very easily, like way down if you want to or way up. Just super, super nice. This one has kind of a red plastic shell. Um, I believe the normal ones are kind of gray. I don't know why, I, I kind of like it. You know, it complements the red light back there. But you know, you get the stock photos and the inner bike stuff. And um, this this one's in your hands, like it's for sale and it's been just tons of fun to ride it. I'm trying to think of anything I might've missed, you know, integrated cables. Um, the battery pack can be charged on or off the bike and that would reduce the weight of it a further like 5.3 pounds about for that battery pack. Yeah. And I like the fact that these are like OEM lights. This is a light kit that came from the manufacturer right out of the box. Yeah, you don't have to worry about taking them off or it's just, it's so it's tight all, and it's, it's aerodynamic. And it's all wired in to run right off your battery pack. You just hit a button and then shut them right off. This is backlit. I think it's got a sensor on it for night riding it automatically. Mm -hmm. And it's not super bright in your face either. Yeah. I think that's a nice hue to it, um, it for night riding and then turn your lights on. That's a really good point. Yeah. Just operating this bike in general is pretty easy. So you charge the battery, you put it on, or you leave it on and charge it. Uh, and then you come up here to the Intuvia display panel. It is removable, it can be swiveled back and forth, but all of the operation, or most of it, can actually be done with this button pad. So you don't have to take your hand off the grip. And that's important when you're going at high speed. Absolutely. So this eye changes sort of the readouts. Let's start out at odometer, trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time. And then range is the really cool one where you, you know you change the level of assist by arrowing up or down here plus or minus and it sort of dynamically calculates how far it thinks you can go based on like the last five miles of riding so it's saying ah oh, you've been riding pretty hard climbing up parking garages and you don't have a full battery we think it's 33 miles on the lowest and you air up to turbo and it says oh, maybe 12 or 15. you know i just had a customer come into the shop and he said he's been out mountain biking and he'll be leaving in that range selection as he's riding along and he's riding in like the the normal mode not like the sport or turbo mode yeah and as he's going up the hill it says oh you got less than eight miles left yeah. you know and he's like ah oh. then he presses the hill and he starts coming down the other side and says you got 25 miles left yeah so again that is calculating depending on what type of terrain you're riding on uh all these different factors and we just climbed and those things change all the time as you're riding so on the fly it's going to give you all kinds of different readings depending on the type of riding that you're doing that's great that's great other readouts here we've got uh five little ticks for the battery indicator i i would like to see bosch put like a battery percentage because each one of these is like 20% increments and there's a big difference between 20% and 0% when the bike like stops. Um, although this isn't very difficult, this particular model to pedal without power because it is light and efficient. Um, then we've got our power level meter on the side here next to those assist levels. We've got speed and miles per hour. And then those extra buttons you were talking about. There's a reset button that clears the trip distance. Mm -hmm. There's the light button there. And you got the graph on the side here as to how much amperage you're pulling out of the battery. Yeah, that's the power one. That's cool. Some of them will have a shift indicator too. It'll actually have a little light that'll come on to tell you when to shift. This one does have it. So this is like a 2016 release year model and it does have these arrows. So if you're spinning too fast, it says, hey, maybe you should shift up to really yeah. optimize the power. This is a pedal assist only 
but it's class three because it's a speed pedelec. Right. We're in California right now, so there's different regulations of like where should you or should you ride this. Again, on the street, potentially, maybe you're someone who has road bike friends that bike a lot more than you do, and you like going, but they're like, yo, we're gonna go for like a 40 mile ride to the, and like maybe you've been working all week or so. Yeah, like I can't, I don't know if I wanna do that. You could keep up with them with this bike, have a ton of fun, blend in pretty well. It, you know, mount it to your traditional car rack because it hangs here. The only thing I don't see is bottle cage bosses. And again, the, the rack, you'd have to use a, a more of a, a beam rack. What else, you, what other thoughts do you have, Sam? I've seen bottle cages that come off the back, especially oh, on this yeah, style the of bike. Ones. I've seen them come in behind. Sometimes it's got a couple of them back here. Yeah. Um, you'd mention also like uh, when it indicates to shift on you. Maybe you're a newbie rider and you're like paying attention to that stuff. But the more time you get on an electric bike, the more you get in tune with the bike and you get a feel for it. And you don't even have to look at any of your gauges. You'll just know after about a month of ownership, yeah. you know, when it needs to shift the gear, what feels right. It, it becomes more second nature for you. And comfort. Like I just want to say I have a knee injury and as someone who doesn't want to strain their knees, but does like riding bikes. I tend to spin, I spin at a higher RPM. So I love having 11 sprockets in the rear and you're probably like, you know, if you're a traditional road biker, you're like, that's nothing, 11, but you don't need as many. And just having a single sprocket in the front keeps the drivetrain simpler, it reduces the weight. You've got assist with you. And again, it's 350 watts on that motor. That's nominal. You get 60 Newton meters of torque. And so there's, it's no problem. You can really climb with this thing. It, it works great and I think you develop your own patterns. Like I, I feel like I have a range of choices here with the different power levels and different spinning cadence. It, it's not like I'm limited to one and I don't really, I just ignore shift sensing personally. Yeah, well you're point. experienced though. Yeah. Not everybody's got as many miles under pro, the belt as you do. Pro, pro level, okay. <laughs> uh, should we get on this thing? Yeah, give it a spin. It's getting a little dark. You yeah. Got the moon behind us to light your way and these awesome lights. We thought this was really cool because you know it has the lights and we're like, yeah, let's save that one for last. Um, I'm gonna hop on and just Maybe go down for a second and then maybe we can ch I can chase you on it. Is that yeah, cool? Sure, if you'd like to. This comes in like four, maybe five different sizes too. And that's the thing about a bike where you're really, you're squeezing performance out. You, you know, you've got the suspension elements here, the minor suspension, but otherwise it's a rigid fork and those narrow tires. You want a frame size that feels good. Um, and of course, quick release on that seat post so you can dry, find the right height. There we go, okay. I'm in turbo mode right now, and you can see that little power graph soaring as I accelerate, even downhill. It's like really getting me going. I just love how responsive that sprocket is. I'm braking with one finger right now, but it's got those hydraulic disc brakes, and so it works okay. Now we're gonna do that same section, but I'm gonna climb it. And I'm, you know, it's one-handed here, so I'm not really maximizing speed, whoa. It just, no problem, like I'm climbing the hill, I could easily hit 20 miles per hour if I wasn't afraid that I would crash horribly. Beautiful. There's Sam over there. So let's do it, buddy. Maybe I'll... Um... Jump up on this wall right here. Yeah. And you can watch me go all the way down and around and into the tunnel. That's a good idea. And then, you know, maybe back up. So again, what's your weight range? You're kind of... 250. 250. So that's, you know, there's some heavier weight. Let's see how it does for him. Out of here. There we go. Love that helmet. And look at the light, it really casts a good. Here he comes, accelerating back up. And you can hear it. That's one of the things about the Bosch motor because it has the smaller sprocket and the motor spinning at a higher RPM. It's responsive, it's powerful, but it's kind of a wee. You know, you hear, hear a little bit of that, the higher RPM. I'm really impressed with this bike. I'm gonna put a camera on it and ride around a little bit.
cage style pedals on this bike and I've seen them get bent up because on a bike like this, more road oriented, you can end up turning with the pedal down and then clink and you kind of you scrape the pedal on the ground. So just keep that in mind, especially if this is boosting you up to higher top speeds. So keep an eye on that sprocket down there when I pedal and when I stop, just how quickly it responds. And listen to the noise too at the higher RPM. extra shifting there because the Bosch system does have shift sensing. It's designed to sort of notice or anticipate based on software when you're shifting and ease off on the motor so it doesn't mash those gears and strain the chain and sprockets. Just amazing. I mean, this thing is so fun because it's light. It just feels like a jet ski or something. You know, I have a feeling. Uh, I stated on the video that it was a light 41 pound bike, and I know somebody's gonna leave a comment. 41 pounds light. You're insane, dude. Yeah. What are you talking about? 41 pounds. Okay. Yeah. This light is so cool. try to do a top speed test.
feel like we we got it, man. You have any other thoughts? No, man. Just go to a high bike dealer and give one a test ride. I think you'll be impressed. They're they're really cool. Um, this one again, five thousand dollars. I don't know if yeah, we mentioned it before. Five thousand dollar price point. You know, it's it's more, but you're getting a high performance bike with some really nice parts. Love that it has quick release front and rear. Love that they're integrating these nicer bike things. Like we were talking about the Alex rims, or these were DC Swiss actually, and the hubs and everything, and just the Magura brakes. I think that's about it. So for the full written review on this, including the exact sizes and some other specs, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com, and of course, especially at night, ride safe. Yep.